As Boeing Starliner wouldn't perform the first crewed mission test until next year, NASA has officially awarded all the final flights needed to keep the space station fully occupied into the year 2030 for the SpaceX Dragon. Well, the question is, is NASA finally giving up on Boeing Starliner? Well, let's talk about it all in today's episode at Alpha Tech Channel. On September 1st, NASA has awarded five additional missions to SpaceX for crew transportation services to the ISS as part of the agency's commercial crew transportation capability contract, taking the company's total contracted missions for Crew Dragon astronaut capsule to 14. The deal, which will employ SpaceX's Crew Dragon spacecraft and Falcon 9 rockets, allows NASA to maintain an uninterrupted U.S. capability for human access to the space station through 2030, NASA officials have said in an update. The latest boost to SpaceX's NASA contract is also part of the agency's effort to ensure a steady run of astronaut flights to the space station as Boeing, the other company with a similar crew transportation contract, has struggled to complete the development of its Starliner space capsule. The pack will cover missions Crew 10 through Crew 14, representing approximately 20 spacecraft seats overall. SpaceX's Crew 5 is expected to launch in early October and Crew 4 is at the space station as of now. SpaceX also received a trio of astronaut flights from NASA in December as part of a sole source modification to its Commercial Crew Transportation Capabilities contract which was first awarded in 2014. SpaceX's crew transportation system is the only one certified to meet NASA's safety requirements to transport crew to the space station and to maintain the agency's obligation to its international partners in the needed time frame, agency officials said at the time. SpaceX's CCT cap deal is now worth a total of $4.9 billion, NASA officials said in today's update. A quick note here for you, NASA is going to pay Boeing a total of approximately $5.1 billion for six crew flights and will pay SpaceX a total of $4.9 billion for 14 flights. It's too wild, isn't it? But we've got to accept the reality. NASA anticipates a potential need to use additional SpaceX flights as early as 2026 to ensure dissimilar redundancy, maintain safe space station operations, and allow each company to work through any unforeseen issues that could arise as the private industry builds operational experience with these new systems. SpaceX is currently NASA's only certified commercial crew transportation provider. The company will fly its sixth rotational mission for NASA in the spring of 2023. While SpaceX is celebrating with this new award, what about Boeing Starliner? Is this the end for Boeing? Well, it's completely reasonable with what Starliner completed compared with SpaceX's Dragon. The company recently completed a largely successful uncrewed test flight in May, but that's just success in itself. The flight still had many errors. Looking ahead, Boeing will make a crewed flight test of Starliner in 2023 and then fly its first operational mission or possibly later if issues are discovered on the crewed test flight. Boeing's Orbital Flight Test 2 went very well and we hope to be able to certify the Starliner system in the near future, says Phil McAllister, Director of Commercial Space at NASA. He said this in an agency news release. However, we will need additional missions from SpaceX to implement our strategy of having each commercial provider flying alternating missions once per year. So far, NASA has yet to announce the purchase of additional Starliner missions. This seems prudent, as Boeing has yet to fully demonstrate Starliner's capability with the crew on board. But based on the number of this week's announcement, it seems probable there are no additional crewed missions awarded to Boeing. Why? Because NASA only plans to fly two crewed space station missions a year with four astronauts aboard each. SpaceX contracted for nine additional missions and Boeing has six on the books. There are eight years of life left in the space station if it stops flying in 2030. While additional modifications to these contracts are always possible, NASA appears to have booked all the rides it needs for a station lifetime into 2030. This doesn't necessarily mean that Starliner will fly just six crewed missions. Boeing signaled its intent to also use the vehicle for private astronaut missions, likely to commercial space stations under development. For example, Boeing is a partner on Blue Origin's Orbital Reef space station project. At present, Starliner is only capable of flying on ULA's Atlas V rocket. So Boeing has only secured enough launches to complete its original six operational Starliner missions for NASA before the Atlas V rocket is retired. NASA's Aerospace Safety Advisory Panel raised concerns about how delays in Starliner's development might affect the availability of the Atlas V 
at its May 12th meeting. Any further delay with Starliner launches would exacerbate this concern, said David West, a member of the panel, especially adding that certifying Vulcan for crewed launches, quote, could take years. At a May 17th pre-launch briefing, NASA and ULA officials said that all the remaining Starliner missions under contract, including CFT and the six post-certification missions, would remain on Atlas V regardless of schedule. From a resource perspective, we have measures in place to protect the talent and to ensure we retain the critical skills to be able to fly an Atlas as late as we need to, said Gary Wentz, Vice President of Government and Commercial Program at ULA. We're in conversations with Boeing and other customers for that capability. Even at a pace of one mission per year though, and with no other customers for Starliner, the supply of Atlas vehicles would be exhausted before the projected retirement of the ISS in 2030. We would look toward the end of the decade to award other flights or have other flights potentially for Boeing, says Steve Stitch, NASA Commercial Crew Program Manager. We would look for a new system, he added. NASA would support human rating a new system when Boeing and ULA are ready. ULA has not announced plans to human rate Vulcan. However, Wentz said that over 90% of the Vulcan Centaur hardware is already flying on Atlas V, simplifying any human rating process. One key change, he said, would be transferring the emergency detection system currently on Atlas, which alerts the spacecraft of any problems with the rocket to trigger its abort system to Vulcan. The other major change, he said, would be human rating the BE-4 engines used on Vulcan's first stage. Boeing may not be the only customer or even the first to seek the human rating of Vulcan. Sierra Space is planning a crewed version of its Dream Chaser cargo spacecraft. The cargo version will launch on Vulcan rockets starting in 2023, and a crewed version could be ready as soon as 2026. That's just theory. The reality is definitely much further away. Well, that about wraps it up for today's episode, and don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section. Everyone's support is motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.